So I've been doing some more tinkering projects lately. For a workbench, I'm using this six foot folding table that I picked up down at Walmart. As you can see on the best of days, it's kind of crowded. I end up probably having about half the table to it that I can work on because the other half is full of all the supplies and parts that I'm using. For the camera to have a good view of what I'm doing, it's gotta be kind of close. Earlier, I had made a cage that went over the table. So that would put the camera up about here. I'm probably gonna expand on that idea. I liked it a lot. The parts I had available when I made that that day weren't very big, so it was less than ideal, but it, the idea definitely worked. You'll see more of that in the future. The other option is if I have a tripod. I could put a tripod maybe about there and then the camera would sit here and that's not too bad. I could probably move something around and put the tripod over here also. The problem with the tripod is it's nice to have a chair and there just really isn't enough room. So that's when I thought of the idea of instead of having the legs, why not just have the top of the tripod with some kind of a fitting that I could mount to the table somehow. It would have to be sort of sturdy because, you know, if you bump the table, you don't want the camera to fall over. So that's kind of the problem I'm trying to solve with this project today. I read a quote one time that said, ideas are like slippery fish. If you don't stab them with a pencil really quick, they're going to get away. I've always got a legal pad or a notepad or scraps of paper laying around and I'll sketch out ideas on them really quick and then earlier I had made a kind of a cage set up that went over the table and I'm thinking I want to expand on that and then I happened to look over at my 3D printer and I thought man wouldn't that be cool so in the future I'm probably going to do some components from the 3D printer the camera rides on rails above the table. Not necessarily motorized, although that would be pretty slick for doing some time lapse. But just some way where I can mount the camera on a rail, move it around above the table so it's not in my way. But uh, that seemed pretty complicated. The other idea that I came up with was a little bit like the functionality of a, like a, a gorilla pod where you had flexible links. But instead of trying to make a gorilla pod, well, that seemed kind of tricky. And I realized that the gorilla pod itself wouldn't really work for me anyway because I needed something that would mount to the table. So I was looking at this and I thought, well, what about if I had a setup of interlocking links, a little bit like the one that I had already made earlier. This is going to be so that I can mount a light fixture on top of my camera. And I made it based on the same spacing as the GoPro. So a GoPro could mount on the top here. I can bend the various parts and get the angle I need. I just wanted to make it bigger. So then I sketched up a much simpler, almost a clevis looking link. So from there I took it over into the computer and uh, went into my 3D program. I use Lightwave, but this design you could knock out on something simple like SketchUp or a lot of different ways you could get to the same solution. You could also have um, carved this out of wood or made it out of metal. Or Once I was in Lightwave, I used a process called CSG, Constructive Shape Geometry. It might mean something else also, but that's the way I remember it. And it's Basically, you start off with, you make a, a simple shape, like a primitive, so I, in this case I, I used a disc on the bottom one, and then used another disc to cut a hole, and I made that hole match a, a quarter inch bolt. And quarter by 20 is what um, the camera tripod uses, so I made that the common size. So once I had the quarter by 20, I used another disc to make the top surface and then grabbed the end of it and stretched it down and then 
used a couple boxes to cut out the corners to come up with the shape. Another quarter inch hole in the top to mount it together. So this would have been the base, so this will mount down on the bottom. And the idea was is this flange down here was enough room to put a clamp on. I added a link. That's the link, and you could have multiple links to come up with any shape. And then the top face, very similar to the base, only the opposite, so two edges and a box cutout, and these would all mount together. From there, I exported to an OBJ file format. That's a fairly common file format that you can use to go between different 3D programs. Uh, from there, I went into uh, Cura, which is a program, a slicing program that came with my 3D printer. Uh, I have a TAS 5. Okay, this is some close-up detail on the uh, 3D printed I say camera support. Uh, what I'm making is a modular set of pieces that can link together and uh, by mixing the different pieces you can mount a camera in different positions. So it's not going to be like a gorilla pod and uh, it's not quite a tripod and uh, mostly I made it so that I could clamp it onto a table or a workbench when I'm working. Uh, what I'm finding is, especially in my apartment because I just don't have enough room, and also get the camera in a position that can record it. Because by the time you set up the tripod, the tripod takes up most of the room that the chair would have taken up and you can't get in there. Um, first of all, I've got this crack that you can see. And when you make a 3D part, it's made in layers. And think of it kind of like, um, like plywood. If you have the plywood going in the wrong direction, it's, it's, well, plywood is really strong in two directions. That's why they, that's why it is plywood. It goes, you know, left, right, and fore and aft, or lengthwise, crosswise. So it's got grains going in two directions, which makes it stronger than wood in, in a lot of ways. The problem is, is the third direction, uh, the individual plies, in theory, could pull apart. Now, the glues that they use on plywoods are probably stronger than the actual wood is, so that point is less of a problem maybe than it used to be, but you still see plywood coming apart sometimes. Uh, 3D printing is the same problem. If you're needing strength in two directions, it's pretty good, but on the third direction between the plies, that's where you can get problems. And that's what happened on this one. Uh, when I was tightening it down to support a camera, um, I could hear it cracking and when I looked at it in the light, yeah, there it is. So that's the top part. That's got a screw coming through it. That's a quarter by 20 standard um, machine bolt, machine screw. That's what size camera tripod sockets are. And when I was designing this, I just used quarter by 20 on everything. It's simpler. And what we've got it's just an inter interlocking chain design. You can see that crack, it goes all the way through. And then on the off side, I use T-nuts. And when I put those in, uh, I had to upsize the back hole to let the T-nut go in. And then I also pre-drilled where the uh, locking pins or tongs or tangs, probably tangs, where they go into the plastic because it would have definitely split the plastic if I just tightened them in like you would with, when you're using wood. So I take a small drill bit and uh, just pre-drill those holes and uh, they go in pretty easy then. The end piece is I had the plies going where the crack is. So the plies are going this way. Because I wanted the flat surface on the table when it was printed so it, it printed <laughs> upward basically. Well, when I made the links I printed them the opposite direction and so their plies are going I think you can 
you can see those. Some of these are opened a little bit, so the plies are running lengthwise, and I think that'll make it stronger in that direction. Like so. Now you can have the camera mounted where you want and aim it straight down. I may add probably knobs on these would be more convenient, but for the prototype, and you don't have to hold the back side, that's what the T nuts are for, it's kind of a captive nut system. get it into a lot of different positions. I don't know if upside down would be useful or not, but this could also work really well really well for mounting lights. So if you had multiple of these and uh, so like you know I've also designed I haven't printed one yet but I've made different lengths of these links so if you just needed it to go some you know straight up you could replace two of the little links with a one or one long link and if you don't want it to be as high you could put it at an angle and you can kind of get it so it, uh, once it gets to the end of its travel they kind of lock by themselves so for instance like this it would probably just sit there I could also use star washers which I got some of those and they do make a fairly big star washer so if I put a star washer in between here I think there's maybe enough room might have to sand it a little bit but then you could loosen it up get it to the position tighten it down just a little bit the star washer would dig into the plastic and you wouldn't have to clamp it all the way down to the plastic hitting the other plastic so I'm sure there's other products on the market that are similar that would do kind of the same thing um, I like this a lot better than the Gorilla Pod because one, you know, it's the idea is that I can lock it down to the surface with a clamp. And since I'm in a workshop, or, you know, it's like a workshop environment, um, you've already got clamps. And, you know, that's why I made the bottom surface flat so I could get the clamp on it. This is a Manfrotto pistol grip. Thirty-two sixty-five, and these are on B&H and other places I can link to it. Uh, what's really cool about these is the, the grip on the bottom. If you pull the handle, it releases the grip on the bottom, and you can move it around, and you can actually move all the way down flat. So if you had this mounted to something, you know, you could do a hybrid of the two, and it works really well. The problem is I can't reach out far enough over a table and uh, you know with the tripod because it gets in the way so that's kind of why I came up with my idea here in the first place now what I do like is they use this quick release head the top part of the head here this bolt comes out and that leaves you with just basically this top part so I'm gonna get this thing and mount it on the top right here then I can use the quick release plate, get the get this mounted how I want it, and then just clip the camera into it. And they clip really well. So then once you got this thing basically in place, you could have the camera locked in, check your shot, and then loosen one joint at a time, wiggle it around until you got it where you want it, lock it down, and you'd be set. So wrap it up. It does work. It's not quite strong enough as it is. This was printed in ABS. Um, the parts that I had printed in the opposite direction, I think, are strong enough. So what I'll probably do, uh, two changes. On the top one, I'm going to get rid of this, this ring entirely, I think. It's not really necessary. Print this one in the opposite direction, the same as how I did the bottom two.
one of those little hacks that gets you through the day here. Uh, usually when you buy a solar light, the batteries are crap. So I've got this uh, multi-purpose battery charger that I use for my bigger lithium ion batteries, but it's also capable of charging uh, nickel metal hydrates and uh, NICADs. So the solar lights use NICADs and the newer ones are using these little two-third double A batteries that are really short and they're just a little bit too short for this battery charger. But I found if I dropped a couple pennies in there on the negative side it makes them just long enough to reach. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. I'll be posting a random mix of projects this year, ranging from photo and video tips and hacks, off-grid projects, 3D printing, set and prop design for a sci-fi spaceship project, and whatever else I decide to tinker with. Stay tuned. This is Carlin, signing off.